thank you to our beautiful worship team. I think perhaps in the end, if you're still here, it will be great if you can just come and continue again. So, um, today is about close the old and open the new, but I, I first, I, I just want to share this. Um, so the Lord woke me very early in this morning with a vivid dream. I'm not going to share the dream with you, but I'm just saying to you, in this dream, I saw the authority, I saw the blue lights, and I saw authority coming, and people are in fear, and they are powerless before this authority. That is not the truth. God gave us power in us. The blood of Jesus is over us. Don't fear authority. Respect it. Do what the Bible tells us. But know that the God that is in us is greater than Him that is in the world. You've got wonder-working power, dunamis power. You've got kratos power, the resurrection power. You've got power to stand against the enemy, and he will flee without you being done any harm. That is God's word. So if you're in a situation where you are threatened by what is happening, don't look to what your circumstances. Look towards God and know, God is saying today, I'm vindicating you. You are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. It's God doing it on your behalf. Amen. So today, um, it's about closing doors and unlocking the future. In, in unlocking the future, there's promotion. So um, before we, we start with the Word of God, I'm just going to tell a story. Is it okay? Just story time. And just join me in this story. But I'm going to just touch on a few things because my prayer is that you will be in the heavenly looking, asking, receiving what God has got for you for this new season. Not on earth, not what you plan. Perhaps it's linked to that, but, but just look into the heavenly spiritually and ask God what is next and, and dream about that. And you'll understand more when I share the word. So, uh, if you can just bring a few things. Um, I just want to share with you. Can we have the mic, please? Uh, so that you can just share what you've got. Perhaps you must mute me so that it won't interfere. So, just quickly show us what you've got. And just say what it is. Don't come near me because we will... Okay, thank you. You can go. Can you hear me? Um, I've been on this journey with Francois, um, and I've taken my vision boards to the next level. <laughs> so, um, this beautiful blanket over there is something that you, you cover yourself with, but you are covering yourself with, with the Word of God. Um, and I'm, because I'm very creative, I'm very visual, and I love beautiful things, so um, that to me is a prophetic action, and it's just absolutely beautiful. And then um, you can even go as far as going and meditating on each of those scriptures. As you're lying there, you're covered with it. You see Ecclesiastes 3.11, and you know what it says. And you lie there covered in this blanket, and you start meditating on, on what the Word says about that. Um, and then as a father, I, I've never had a great father experience on earth, but God has given me fathers in the house. Um, my, my love language is words of affirmation, um, and the devil has come against me with um, abuse. But this father 
is a father of words of affirmation. And it's really, it does incredible things in a person in terms of healing. So this blanket I bought for my son, and, and I want to cover him with that. Um, that's what we can do for our children and our spiritual children. So you can, you can read there, to my son, never forget that I love you. And this is like also from Father God, and it's there, the lion and the lion cub. As you grow older, you will face many challenges in life. Just do, do your best. Life, um, that, life isn't a, um, about waiting for the storms to pass. It's about learning how to dance in the rain. Every day may not be good, but find something good in every day. Love, what? Love, love, live. Follow your dreams, believe in yourself, and remember to be awesome. Be awesome. Um, and it carries on and on. Okay. So while she's speaking, <laughs> just ask God, why do I see these things? And just quickly yes. touch on so, what you... Yes, so some of you know God's been speaking to me about this but butterfly, that I'm a butterfly, and he's, I'm now winging, I'm, I'm flying, I'm not in the, in the cocoon anymore. Okay. So, so, so what I've been doing is, yeah... So that butterfly I found, and it's next to my corp kissing. If I open my eyes in the morning, I like stare into it. And it's got affirmations on it just out of the word of God that says who I am, who he says that I am. And it's colorful because I'm a colorful person and I, that's a colorful butterfly. Um, yeah, okay. Um, and, and I've been struggling with that I'm not enough, but I am enough. Jesus made me enough. So I, I've got this little reminder on my finger. It says, I am enough. <laughs> Um, ach ja, there's lots. There's this beautiful necklace. It's a, a mountain and a mustard seed. It's little reminders. You Mark know, we were... 11, 24, 26. Speak to your mountain. If you've got faith like a mustard seed. There's somebody at the gate that wants to come in, please. Yes. And then um, I've had problems driving. I've been attacked. My... Yeah, so this is a car key with Psalm 91 on it. Amen. <laughs> so I'm covered. I know it, I, this is not covering me, but when I look at it, I remind myself that God is covering Last me. Last one. Um, there's just this bangle, and it's got a beautiful scripture on it. Psalm 46, verse 3. Um, that when... Lees gaar I don't have my brillas here. God is within her. She will not fall. Fail. Fail. Fall. Yeah. So, yeah. so this is just a little prophetic action um, and taking vision board to the next level so that I keep reminding myself of truth. Amen. And I said to Renata, perhaps we must start an uh, e-commerce shop and produce these things so that the, the whole world can have faith, can have dreams. Meryl, she didn't know what I was going to minister on today. <laughs> so... Okay, you can keep the sets of keys. So, um, my pipes in the garage, in my garage, burst for the third time in three months. And then as normal, my garage gets flooded. And then I came upon the set of keys and I thought, okay, just let's put it in the dining room. But I became aware of the season that we're finding ourselves in with Purim and the whole story of Esther and the unlocking of the doors. And last night, the Lord just reminded me to actually bring the set of keys this morning. And I was, this is, this is basic. I didn't even realize that oh, last year I was painting Esther, but um, there she comes before the throne, the doors being flung open, the doors, she steps out of where she was in terms of bondage, and she comes before the king. She comes before the king with an anointing. Because if you read, if you can actually read the whole book of Esther, when Haman, there was a plot. Uh, don't, every, don't go there, it's mine. <laughs> don't, don't take so, the sermon away. That? So Haman <laughs> plotted every few centuries that happens in the kingdom. There's always a type of annihilation. So she knew and her... Mordecai sent a message to her. Do not think because you are safe in the palace that you will not perish. 
Otherwise, we, but what do stood, I have to say? She stood with her authority, yes. unlocking the door That's it. for her nation. And are you going to stand in authority to That's unlock for your family, for your community, and for your society? Amen. So I'm taking this keys close to my heart. You just keep that. Um, Karin will have that. Thank you. So, I pray that while we're showing this to you, that God will ignite, ignite some dreams in your heart. Uh, Johan and Elizabeth, just come and stand with me for a minute, please. So, this is a very old talit, talit, and it's about the Joseph's anointing. And the Joseph's anointing is about wisdom from God to be a kingdom financier. So there are sitting some of you here that are walking in that or that must walk in that. And I'm just igniting some dreams. And you know you're walking in that, eh? So we're just putting that over you prophetically. So I'm just going to send them out so that you see that. You know, Johan and Elizabeth is part of the directors of this place, but also part of the directors of Tent International. And what they are going to do, you will see them, and not it's like an indicator. They will be here and gone and here and gone. So they will be going out to other groups, churches, as they were at Powerhouse in um, Gordons Bay recently. They're going to do that again and again. So if you will just stretch your hands, we're going to release them to do that. You know, my, my prayer is that all of us, we must be here to be fed. But if you next Sunday you're at another place to feed other people, that's what we are born to do. Eh? Okay. So I just release you, Johan Elizabeth, for the calling that God has put upon your life. We bless you with that and for that. And we pray a special anointing of the Holy Spirit upon your life. Just to go and ignite, just to go and, and, and uh, start the fires, so that the people will hear the sound of the voice of God wherever they go in Jesus' name. Just go and do what God sent you to do. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, thank you. So please, just bear with me. I'm going to tell you a story today. You know, in the book of Esther, we are in the month of Adar. There's a Gregorian calendar, and there's a biblical calendar. Not a Jewish, a biblical calendar. And in the biblical calendar, because it's a leap year, there's two Adars. There's an Adar and an Adar. And in the month of Adar, it's just before the, the, the actual Jewish New Year. The actual Jewish New Year, they've got two. Double up. They've got one in Nisan. It's in the beginning of April, around about the 9th of April. Uh, so they are preparing at this stage. And what I'm ch sharing with you today is, in the book of Esther, we are reminded because it happened. Esther happened in the month of Adar. All doors were closed. And God supernaturally did the impossible. Did you hear that? So I'm asking you while I'm speaking to just tap into what God is showing you about your life, about your future, and just to hear from Him, what is He saying? What is the next phase? Where are you going? And just to take hold of that. At the end of this celebration, we will be praying for you, everyone that wants to be prayed for, for your dreams, for what God is showing you. Perhaps it's nothing that, that we showed you today. Perhaps it's totally something else. And here are people sitting here that, that you carry big, big dreams. Let us just touch you in the name of Jesus. So, Father, I pray in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach that you will show us what my calling, my purpose, and my destiny on planet Earth is in the name of of Jesus Christ. Okay. You ready for story time? 
please just jump in with what God is sharing. I'll ask you some questions and just help us with this whole story. So, long, long ago, there was a great king and a great queen. But this queen decided she didn't any longer want to do what this king wanted from her. Because at his parties, he said, you dance. And she didn't want to do that. Her name was Vasti. And she just said, no, enough is enough. So the king got offended. And he asked the people around him, the advisors, so what should you do if the queen are rebellious? They don't, she don't want to do what the king wants her to do. And they said, cut. Remember, it's a, a heathen uh, surroundings. They didn't believe in God. They served idols. And they said, leave her, let her go. And they said, let's get a nice, beautiful one, a young queen for you. And... The king thought about it and said, yes, that's a good thought. Beautiful, young one. Yes, let's do it. So they sent all through that kingdom, they sent people out, and they looked for the most beautiful young women. And then they came to this house. And this beautiful young Jewish lady was actually an orphan. She was, her parents were killed. We don't know when and where. Perhaps it was in the, the war when they took the Israelites out into this captivity. But she grew up with her uncle, Mordechai. And Mordechai was raising her in the fear of God. He served God with every breath. So she knew God because she grew up. Do you hear that? She knew God because she grew up with somebody who walked with God. Didn't speak about God, but walked with God every day. But God had a purpose and a destiny for this young woman, as he's got a purpose and a destiny for you. God created her with so much beauty because he wanted to use that beauty. And he created you with something that he wants to use. But then he anointed her with his favor. Created with beauty, anointed with favor. Because God had a purpose and a destiny for her. And in that way, Esther went with the people that brought her to the palace of the king. And they were kept aside. And you know, as it was in those times, for one year... She was prepared, bathing in myrrh and I don't know whatever, milk and all the beauty treatment for a year. I think at that stage, they were so saturated with this lovely fragrances that when they entered the room, you could smell it. I think so. Because it was a year of doing that. And she had favor. From the first moment she walked in there, Haggai, that was the guy that looked after all these beautiful young ladies, she had favor with him. And wherever she went, she had favor. So, what is your anointing? What did God create you with that he wants to use? And what is the anointing resting upon your life? Do you know? Because we have to know that. To do what God created us to do. So when eventually the time came that Esther was called to spend one night with the king, she was ready. And all the other ladies, beautiful young ladies, before her, you, you had the privilege as a young lady in this position with everything they brought to you and everything that was wealthy and beautiful and bracelets and whatever, you could take as much as you wanted to that one night with the king because after that night, you were taken to another area where you stayed for the rest of your life. So they took everything they could get, wealth 
and beauty to be there. But Esther didn't do that. She didn't take anything with. And she talked with Haggai, the guy that, that looked after her. And the only thing she wanted to do was to please the king. So this one night with the king, it's only one thing she wanted to do. She wanted to please the king. And you know what happened. When she entered the room, because God's favor was upon her life, the king experienced something. He saw the beauty, radiant beauty. But he experienced something about the favor and he didn't even understand what he's experiencing. But he immediately fell in love because God ordained it that way. That was the plan of God all the time. And he put the crown on her head and he loved her with all of his heart. She was the new queen. And this one night with the king changed everything. Everything in Esther's life. Everything regarding the future of her people. One night with the king. May I ask you, what happened with your one night with the king? Did you have a night with the king? Do you have many nights with the king? I know about people, you know, we can just read the word. Abram, it wasn't the night, it was in the middle of the day when the three men came to him and he had an encounter with God. Changed his life. Jacob, you remember it was a night and he saw the angels going up and down. And another night, as he was returning and he was in fear, he met somebody at a little river. And he wrestled till daybreak. He had an encounter. He said, I will not leave you unless you bless me. You remember? And he was touched on his hip and he had a limp for the rest of his life. That's why they say, don't trust anybody without a limp. Do you have a limp? What happened in your encounter with God? I know about people like Dorita told me about Heidi Baker this morning. She was at Toronto. And when God touched Heidi Baker, she was in the spirit for we don't know how long. And God transformed like the butterfly everything in her life. And then she went to Mozambique and the rest is history. Our God used it to open the eyes of the blind and to bring people to Jesus Christ and to raise young people to have a next generation ready when the enemy invades that country. I remember Bill Johnson in the beginning years of their ministry. We always see Bethel, you know, the, the glamour and everything that's happening there, and it's wonderful. I was there, and it was so wonderful to be in God's presence there. But there was times, there were times in the beginning when everything wasn't that glamorous. And he didn't work day and night. He was on his knees day and night. He was wasted. Many times when they came into his office, he was just in the spirit. He was wasted. They couldn't talk with him. He was just in the presence of God. He was so touched by the presence of God that when they reached out to an uh, 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 outreach one time and somebody was with him in the room and that guy went to the bathroom in the middle of the night, he just heard John in his sleep. He just said, oh, Jesus, 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 while he was sleeping. So I'm asking you, did you have an encounter with the king? Did he change your life? I had encounters. I had encounters when God encountered me in Vinduk in Namibia and saved my life when I was totally, totally lost on my way to hell. He encountered me another time when he baptized me in the Holy Spirit. He encountered me another time when he baptized me in fire. He encountered me three times in Israel. Supernaturally, I will never forget it. Every time something happened. There's fire in my bones. I, I can't keep quiet. 
And I just love the king and I lo just love the presence of the king. Not one night with the king, every night with the king. How does your life look like? But it's not all about what we experience, people. Christianity isn't about our experiences. The experience is a bonus. Sometimes, and most of the times, there are very difficult circumstances that we have to face. Esther was in a life-threatening situation. You know Haman? He was this important guy. You remember? Second in charge in the kingdom. And wherever he went, people had to bow down. Oh, mighty Haman! But certain people didn't bow, like Mordecai. Because they didn't bow to, be, to anybody else but to God. Abba, Elohim, Yahweh. That's all. And Haman was so offended that he wanted to kill this guy. And he wanted to kill all the Jews. Because they said the whole nation will not bow to you. So he came to the king with all the authority that he had. And he said, O king, do you know there's a nation that doesn't bow before you? And the king said, what? He said, yes. But if it's your will, I will bring you all the silver. I will put this amount of silver into your treasury. And if you just allow me and just write it, I will have all these people that doesn't want to bow before you, O king. I will have them destroyed and killed in one day. Is that okay? And the king said, bring it. I'll sign it. And it was life-threatening. So when this letter was distributed, everywhere in this kingdom, the Jews were shattered. They were in sackcloth. They were mourning. They were crying out to God, God! Because they knew when the king has signed it, even if the king said, no, I'm taking it back, he can't. It's written. It will be done. It's impossible to turn it around. So this is an impossible situation. So Mordechai was at the gate of the palace in sackcloth. And you may not be. They kill you if you do that. You cannot be in sackcloth before the palace. And they said to Esther, do you know your uncle is, is, is in sackcloth? He will be killed. And she sent the lady. She said, put this on. And he said, do you know, and he sent her the letter and said, do you know that all your people is going to be killed on this day? So Esther, it's your responsibility to go to your king and ask him to turn this around. She said, I can't. Why not? Because you can only go to the king if you are invited. If you go to the king uninvited, you could be killed instantaneously. Why? Because they had to protect the king. Anyone coming near the throne of the king, when they see him, they kill them before they ask. Because they had to protect the king. And she said, can you read Esther 4, verse 13, 14 for us, please? That is what Haman said to her. When she said, but I can't. And Mordecai told them to answer Esther, Do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all the other Jews. For if you remain completely silent at the time, relief and deliverance will arise from the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet know, yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Who knows if you are sitting here in South Africa for such a time as this. People, if we know what's happening in this country behind the curtains, we will know it's time for the believers to stand up. Really? I don't have to tell you anything. Who knows? Perhaps you were born for a time like this. So I'm asking you again, do you know your purpose and destiny? Do you know your anointing? Do you know what God called you to do here and throughout the earth? 
And what are your challenges? I'm at a place in my life that I sit with certain things. I say, God, it's impossible. For many, it's impossible. But with God, everything is possible. What are your circumstances? I'm trusting God in the impossible, that, in the, that He will do the possible. That He will do the miracles. With all my heart, that's what I, me and Dorita, we are living that way every day. What are your challenges? So when Esther heard this, she said, okay, let's have a deal. You go, you pray, and you fast. You don't eat, you don't drink for three days. I will do the same, and my maidens will do the same. We won't eat, we won't drink. We seek the face of God, because only God that can turn it around. Not even the king can turn this around. We need a God, supernatural, miracle, to save the Jews. And after three days, I will do as you've said. I will go to the king. And the rest is history, eh? You remember. So the Jews fasted and they prayed. And after three days, she put on the nicest clothes and, and then she went. And at the place where the other people were killed, when she got there, the king looked up. And there's only one way that the life could be saved if you put out his scepter. So at that very moment when she was on the brink of death, they don't ask questions, they just kill and they ask afterwards. The king said, Ah, my love. And they brought her in. And he said, what can I do? 30 days she didn't see the face of the king. It was the biggest risk of her life. She said, I'll do it because God made me for a time like this. He created me for a time like this. Would you do it? Are you willing to do it today? Whatever God asks of you. So when, when she entered, the king said, My love, what can I do for you? Everything, the half of my kingdom I will give to you. Whatever I can. And she said, um, My king, I just, I just miss you. Will you come and dine with me tonight he said anytime she said and bring that Haman guy that mighty guy bring him with it's okay that's okay you see what she received was godly strategy that's what we need today we need godly strategy not what people think not what they expect from us what God says that is what we have to do and with godly strategy said Come and she prepared the most beautiful meal and it was so nice and and at the end of the meal the king said uh, my love so so what's on your heart what can I do for you remember my kingdom half of that is yours and she said this was so good can I can I please ask will you consider tomorrow night coming again and bring this guest of honor with he said any time any time for you. We'll come, we'll see you. And that night, the king couldn't sleep. Some more other reason, you know what the reason is. He was wide awake and he said, ah, just bring me what happened in my kingdom for the last few years. Just bring it, just read it. I can't sleep, so let me hear what's happening in my kingdom. And they brought and they said, and there was a guy, now they were reading, and there was a guy, his name was Mordecai, and he saw that two of the gods of the king planned to ki kill the king. And he informed the king. And they did some research. And they saw it is true. And then they said, let's kill those two guys. And they did it. And then they wanted to go. He said, whoa, 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 whoa. So what, what recompensation? What, what did they do? What did they bless this guy with? No, nothing. The history just went on. He said, whoa, 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 whoa. Nothing. He saved my life. I didn't even know about it. So the next morning, early in the morning when Haman came in and he thought, you know, I was with the king and the queen yesterday and they invited me again. I'm so powerful in the kingdom. Who knows, one day I can be king. And as he entered into the palace, he said, but this is, this is a, a bright guy. He said, uh, Haman, so just, just tell me, if, if I want to bless somebody, if I want to 
show the people that I appreciate somebody. I really, what do you think I should do? And Haman immediately thought, oh, it's me. I'm that guy. And he said, oh, yes, you take one of your horses, one of your robes, your kingly robes, you get somebody to, to run before this horse and just cry out, this is how the king wants to treat somebody that he, he said, brilliant. Come on, you go and do it now to Mordecai. <laughs> you can just think about it. He was devastated. So he had to run before the horse and say, this is how the king wants to honor somebody. That... And when he came back, the Bible says he was devastated. And because it was such a bad thing, he wanted to kill this Mordecai. And he had the gallows being prepared to hang him. And while he was going back and depressed and talked to the people in his house about that, they said, you know, if this Jew started doing this to you, your life is done. The people in his house said that to him. And then another guy from the palace came and said, it's time, please come, come, it's time for dinner. And he went out. And then they had this beautiful dinner. And he was so happy to be with the king and the queen and again. And, and then the king asked the same thing. He said, so my love, Queen Esther, what can I do for you? The, the half of my kingdom is yours. And she said, my king, somebody wants to kill me. He said, what? He said, yeah, not only me, my people also. Who on earth can do something like this? King, kill the queen and her people? He said, this guy. He said, what? And he was furious. He was so furious, he had to run into the garden to cool down. And at that stage, this Haman, he feared for his life. And he, he went to the sofa where the queen was sitting and he was begging her for his life. And then the king entered and he saw that. And he said, what? Now you're at my wife also. And he said, what will we do? They said, it's ready. Hang him. And you know what happened. They hung him. So the queen said, but they're going to kill us. He said, my love, I can't do anything about that. It's impossible. I can't turn this around. But God can. We know. And she said, but what? He said, what I can do, what I suggest is, I'll write another letter. In this letter, I can't cancel what I've said. But in this letter, I say, the Jews can defend themselves. She said, yes, that's it. And the Jews prepared, and they defended themselves. They killed so many of their enemies that they needed another day. They said, we need another day, O king. And he said, you've got another day. And they killed all their enemies. And then what happened? Mordechai was brought into the palace in the place of Haman, and he became second in charge. God's purpose and destiny for his people. God's purpose and destiny for you and me. He lifted Haman, uh, Mordechai in Haman's place to be second in charge. Two Jews in an ungodly society could decide what will happen. Do you hear that? History was changed because people knew their purpose and destiny, because they heard the voice of God, because people were ready to be killed if necessary. But I will do the will of God. Do you hear the, the voice of God today? Do you hear God speaking to you and me? We are in the month of Adar. We are just before the new year. God wants to release new things. Isaiah 43, 18. Behold, I'm doing a new thing, says the Lord. You can see it coming. Do you know what it is? Did you tap in? But there's all doors that should be closed. How can you be in this position and walk out into the new position? It can't be done simultaneously. So what are the old doors that has to be closed? So that you can enter. And what are the new doors? You know, this is the year of the open door, hey? It's the time 
that uh, the, the Dalet, the four at the end of this year is the Dalet. It's the sign of a door. And the, the, the number just before that is eight. So it's actually double doors that are opening. Are you ready? Are you ready for what God is doing, opening the double doors? While I was preparing this, God spoke to me one morning very early. And I was on my face before God and I said, Lord, I know who I am in Christ. I know what you called me to do, but for this new season, will you just show me? And he confirmed everything that he called me for with verses. He said, Lord, that is who you called me to be. That is what I'm going to do in this new season. What is the anointing you gave me? And he gave me the anointing again. He said, Lord, that is what I'm going to do. And what do you want me to do? And he gave me three things for the new season. But the old doors must be closed. And suddenly, doors were closing. Doors that I thought, this is God's way that I have to look. It was just closing. It was dead. The morning after I had this encounter with God in the middle of the morning, early in the, in the morning, in the middle of the night, I got a phone call and one of those doors just closed. In a phone call, I was driving. I said, Lord, what's happening? But I'm rejoicing because God said he will close doors. He will open doors. Are you hearing the time and the season we are in? Do you know what the old doors are? There's no life in it. You don't understand why it has to close, but it's, it's the time. You can't step into the new if the old didn't close. The month of Adar. And I believe with all my heart that what's coming is not on the same level than what you experienced until now. With all my heart, I believe that when God is opening up the new double doors and you walk through that, it's promotion. Tell your neighbor, it's promotion. That's what we have to expect. So that is what I wanted you to start dreaming about. And, and that is what we want to pray. And actually, the only thing I want to do today is pray with you, just touch you if possible, if you know there's old doors to be closed and there's new doors to be opened. And if you don't know, I also pray with you that God will open your spiritual eyes and your understanding in the Spirit so that you will know what God wants to do with your life for the rest of your life, for the next new season. People, we cannot be ignorant as believers. Eyes didn't see and ears didn't hear. But God has revealed to us. And the Spirit of God is opening the mysterion of God, the mysteries of God, as we are sitting here. Do you hear it? Please, in the name of Yeshua Mashiach, I want to ask you not to just walk in the ways you've always walked. Make sure if there's nothing new, then the... What's happening now is your new. But if it's new, step into that. Don't wait. Amen. Perhaps I must stop talking now and let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you for a time like this. We praise you for your word from Esther. And, and we desire not only one night with the king, but encounters and encounters and encounters with the King every day of our lives. We want to live in your presence, Lord Jesus, our King. And as you've told us, Jesus, we only want to do what we see the Father do. We only want to say what we hear the Father say. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that in this very moment you will touch people's spirit that you will send your angels to touch us that we will experience you and that we will know what you want us to do for the next season 
And as we go out from here and as we spend time with you today and tonight and whenever, Lord, that you will just confirm and confirm and confirm so that we will be walking in the perfect will of God in rhythm with the heartbeat of God. Speaking what God is speaking, doing what God is doing, proclaiming what God is proclaiming. Father, help us to stand tall. We know that the whole creation is groaning. It's yearning for your sons, your daughters to be revealed. And we know that the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. And we pray that we will experience that now, not one day, Lord, but that we will experience it now. And even this ministry and the whole of Powerhouse International, all the places in South Africa and all over the world, Lord, that we will hear your voice, that we will be the new wine, that we will experience the breath of God, the wind of the Spirit, that we will experience what you want to do in us and through us, and that we will be in alignment. We pray that this will glorify you, that even the prayer we pray now will glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. So while I'm, I'm asking, yes, uh, Mike, please. Um, will you please, Renata, just bring some of that stuff and please help her just to hold some of those things that, that, that the people can see it and, and just. Adrian, you can hold this one and put it over somebody if they want to walk in that anointing. Please, Mark. Morning, everyone. Revelations 19, 19. Then I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to wage war against the rider on the horse and his army. And this morning as we were praying, as Diewald was praying, I saw a vision of Jesus on the white horse. And this light, this glorious light was coming down over him. And then next minute, I started seeing the armies of God, His people. And then it reminded me back in the day when I was in the Marines, the South African Marines. And the Lord also reminded I was in Eagle Company, on the wings of eagles. And I remember as we stood on the parade ground, the Lord, the, the commander of the platoon, and the platoon commander was always the captain, who is the captain, the captain of the hosts. Jesus Christ and I could see him standing and say platoon attention and everybody would be in attention and I see Jesus standing sitting on the white horse and he says platoon forward march and we start marching in unison start marching so I declare in the spirit this morning Lord in the name of Jesus that we walk and we march forward in unison in you, Lord. And the enemy has no authority because you are the captain of the hosts. And we speak it this morning and declare it that Jesus Christ is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And no weapon fashioned against us will prosper in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. This is so true. We are the army of God. Do you want anything? Just look at all the things. Look at that painting, please. Look at the keys. Look at everything that is here. And perhaps some of that is what you want. Perhaps it's something else that you dream about. And those of you who want us to just pray with you, we're just going to pray with you and touch you so that you will know what doors must be closed. Thank you. Bring it to the front. So that you know what doors must be closed and what, what doors have to be opened. Amen. So um, I'm just going to invite you once, and that's now. If you want to receive from God, if you know or you just want to be blessed, this is the time. Come, please.